Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is part two on the chemistry of life, which is part of unit two. And in this video cast, we're going to focus in on a very important property of water called cohesion and adhesion. Okay, this is part of our first benchmark we're going, we're going, where we're going to focus on these two ideas, cohesion and adhesion. All right. All right, here's a water molecule. And as you should already know, water is a molecule made up of two hydrogens and one oxygen atom. Now, this big red circle represents the oxygen atom, and this is a hydrogen atom, and this is a hydrogen atom. Now, the water molecule is held together atom to atom by what we call covalent bonds. So the bond holding the oxygen to the hydrogen is called a covalent bond. Okay? And it's covalent because the electrons that are in the bond are being shared. So the water molecule has two covalent bonds okay, that hold the molecule together. And these are pretty strong bonds. But what's really interesting is it's an unequal sharing of electrons. So that means that the oxygen actually has more control of the electrons than the hydrogen does. So this means that it's what we call a polar covalent bond. Polar meaning we get a positive and a negative effect from the unequal sharing of electrons. And remember, electrons are negative. If you remember what's inside of the nucle um, inside of all atoms, we have electrons, we have protons, and we have neutrons. All right, and I'm hoping you remember that electrons carry a negative charge and protons carry a positive charge. Okay, so if this oxygen atom is attracting the electrons to itself, it's getting more negativity. So that means that this oxygen atom has a net negative charge associated with this end of the water molecule. And because the negativity is being pulled towards the oxygen, that leaves some positivity at the hydrogen ends. Okay, so the hydrogen ends of the molecule have a slight positive charge and the oxygen end has a slight negative charge. And this makes the water molecule act a little bit like a magnet. So it's got a positive end and a negative end. And this is where we get the idea of poles, okay, a positive pole and a negative pole. So the water molecule kind of orients itself positive to negative like a little magnet. And this is happening because of the polar covalent bonds. All right, now when you, of course, water molecules generally don't run around by themselves. They're generally close to many, many, many other water molecules. And this produces an effect called cohesion. Water molecules are attracted to each other. So the positive end of this water molecule is attracted to the negative end of this one. So we get this little attraction right here. And same thing here. The negative end of this oxygen is attracted to the positive end of this hydrogen. So we get an attraction here. Now these are not covalent bonds. These are special bonds that make water molecules sticky or attracted to each other. And these bonds are called hydrogen bonds. Well, for you faculty and students, thank you for participating in a very successful lockdown drill. Lockdowns are practiced by all Fairfax County schools to prepare schools for a serious security situation either in or in the vicinity of our school. Your participation and focus during this drill is appreciated. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay, so that's a new idea here. These bonds, there's one, two, three, four of them here among five water molecules are called hydrogen bonds. And hydrogen bonds can form and reform very easily. They're not strong bonds, but they make water molecules stick to each other, or they give water a stickiness that we call cohesion. Now, cohesion, you can think of it as water molecules holding hands with other water molecules. So I found this little cartoon. That's kind of a nice way of saying it. And adhesion is a new property. Adhesion is when water molecules stick to other things. Now you probably know lots of other things in the world can get wet and if the fact that they can get wet means that they're able to form hydrogen bonds with water molecules which gets a different name. We call it adhesion. So you probably figured out that adhesion has something to do with stickiness. Co means when it's with other things that are alike. Adhesion means when it, you're sticking to something that's different. All right. So when water bonds to itself we use the word cohesion and when water bonds to other things, we call it adhesion. Okay, here's some pictures of cohesion and adhesion. Here we have some water on a surface that isn't absorbing the water, and you can see that the water molecules are sticking to each other, and the hydrogen bonds are pulling the quantity of water into the most compact shape possible, which is a sphere. Now, of course, it's flattened because gravity is pulling the water down. But if you go to a situation where 
it's not as much gravity like in space. You can actually get water floating around in spheres. And there's some really cool videos on YouTube of what water does in space. It, it tends to float around in these globs that are very spherical in shape. That's caused by all the cohesive forces of the hydrogen bonds pulling all the water molecules as close together as possible. Okay, here's some pictures that I'm hoping will show you the idea of adhesion. This is a piece of wet paper, so you can see that water will stick to paper. So water molecules are forming hydrogen bonds with the material that the paper is made from. And of course, everybody knows your hair will get wet. So that means whatever your hair is made of will also form hydrogen bonds with water molecules and allow them to stick. Okay, so the idea of adhesion, the idea of cohesion. All right, now, when things get wet and form hydrogen bonds, we say that those things are hydrophilic, which means they attract water. Okay, the word hydrophilic means water-loving. And some common examples of hydrophilic materials are paper, hair, glass, soil, cotton, and so on. Anything that will absorb water and get wet, we say that it's hydrophilic. All right, hydrophobic is just the opposite. These are materials that actually repel water. They can't form hydrogen bonds, so they can't get wet. So hydrophobic literally translates to water fearing. And things that can't get wet or things that repel water are waxes, oils, um, feathers of some birds like ducks, etc. So I think you get the idea. All right, um, here's a cool picture of a duck. And obviously ducks don't get wet. They don't sink in the water. And the reason why they don't get wet is they very carefully groom themselves and spread oil over their feathers from a special gland under their tail. And as long as a duck can keep its feathers oily, they won't get wet. So if it won't get wet, it can't get cold. And so ducks can actually float around in really, really cold water and not get hypothermia because their bodies don't get wet because of their hydrophobic feathers. All right. Part three is going to be about surface tension and capillary action. Thanks for listening.